I'm always interested in the intersection of race and sports, race and anything really. It's the story of the human race. And um, you know, this is, we've, I've done this show for a year. Uh, so that we're just starting our second season. You're actually the third African-American male who's in an interracial marriage that's been right. on the show. Uh, I interviewed Doc Rivers. Okay. who talked about dating a white girl at Marquette, now his wife, early 1970s, dealing with overt racial epithets to their face. Charlie Strong, the new coach at Texas, your favorite school. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he described in, in a more subtle way right. how being in an interracial marriage may have slowed his rise up the coaching ranks. So you, you, you have the perspective of the younger generation, 24-year-old right. male. Give me a sense of where we are in 2014 on this. How much of an issue, especially being the public figure that you are, whether it's an issue from the white community or the African-American community, which is where it flared up last year because uh, an African-American commentator um, remarked on this with some uh, right. disapproval. Right. Where are we in 2014 on this? Um, we've certainly made progress, but, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm an analytical guy, and, you know, I know there's still people that have issues with interracial marriages, and that's just what it is. Um, you know, we had to deal with it, uh, not necessarily at Baylor, but anytime you walk around and, and people give you funny looks, it's just, you understand that some people aren't going to agree with it, whether it be in the uh, white community or the black community. Um, but we understood that when we decided to, to get married and, and uh, have that relationship and uh, we're willing to deal with it. But it's not as prevalent an issue, like I said, as, as uh, Doc or, or Charlie uh, had to deal with. Uh, so I think in that regard we have uh, moved on, but I think more so it's, it's, it's hidden today in today's society. Um, and I mean, if you look at social media, uh, if you look at some of the bad things that are said on social media about different people, myself included, uh, you can see the, uh, <laughs> the racial undertones of everything that's being said. And when people can hide behind something, uh, they're a whole lot more willing to say uh, things that won't be traced back to them. Uh, but it can still kind of show you uh, that backdrop to, to what America is still having to deal with and go through to this day. Uh, I, don't, I try not to judge anybody, um, and, and hopefully they don't judge me for the fact that uh, I decided to have a white wife. You always talked about wanting to go to law school and be a lawyer. In fact, you were going to start law school right. if you hadn't left Baylor. Do you still have in your mind uh, that when football's over, you're going to pursue a law degree? People have talked about maybe getting into politics. You're certainly in the right town for right. that. Is a law degree in your future? Is politics potentially in your future? Uh, first things, I don't know if politics is in my future just because it's not something that I'm necessarily interested in at 24 years old. Uh, there's, you know, I don't know if that'll change in the future, but right now I definitely don't see myself doing politics. <laughs> um, but, Smart kid. <laughs> but, but law, uh, certainly I don't think Baylor's going to let me uh, you know, live the rest of my life without going to Baylor Law School uh, before it's all said and done. So I think I'll end up doing that. Uh, and uh, I got a master's in uh, film and digital media, so I might get into that with new technologies and developing those things uh, with training-based things for athletes. So we'll see. That. There's a lot of doors open. Uh, but right now, you know, I'm focused on one door, uh, and that's being the greatest football player of all time.